And so this meditation in the language of Sanskrit is called a shamatha. And in Tibetan, that is translated as Shiva la Nepa, which means abiding in peace. Mm. Uh, that, all of this is that when we're here to talk about calm abiding, this shamatha practice, what we're doing is turning our attention inwards and then working with a method to attain happiness from within. Okay. Mm-hmm. And so when we talk about mind, what we mean by mind as a definition is something which is clear and aware. And what is meant by that, um, and sometimes it's given the, the definition of something which is merely or just clarity and awareness. And what's meant by that is that it's not something which is physical. It's not something which is created by physical elements, but it is something which illuminates which experiences, which is aware of things, which understands, sees, is aware, experiences, feels. That's what we mean, what is meant by mind. Mm-hmm. And so anytime we have a state of mind, that mind has to be, has to arise in connection with some object. And so there's this meeting of or connection of mind and its object. And so whenever mind meets with an object, either the mind is somehow, you know, pleased with that meeting, is upset by or averse to that meeting, or just kind of um, falls by the wayside, kind of careless about that meeting. So in relation to those three situations, we have the, what we refer to as the afflictive, afflictive mental thoughts, afflictive emotions, whatever, there's different terms for this, um, of attachment, aversion, and ignorance. So you're attached to the pleasant, pleasant meeting, averse to the unpleasant meaning, ignorant of or careless about the neutral meaning. Um, so, that is, that. so a mind, your mind always has to be merged with or connected to some object. Well, so when, when the mind meets with an object that it's pleased to be meeting with, um, that it's you know desirous of or happy about, then we have the corresponding um, you know, mind of affliction of emotion of whatever, of attachment. And when it meets with one that it's not pleased with, then it has aversion or anger towards that. Mm-hmm. And so when we are you know, caught in the midst of these feelings or these thoughts of attachment and aversion, then our mind gets really stirred up by those, by those connections, um, by, those, by those thoughts. And so in Tibet, we have, we give the examples of, we say that desire is like, uh, the chukoma, which is yeah, the cha- oh, cha- it's like cha- boiling water, you know, like water that's just turbulent and boiling. And um, anger is like a burning fire. Mm-hmm. And if we are in this state where our mind is in the state as if it was like boiling water or a burning fire, then there's no comfort in that. There's no happiness there. Okay. But, you know, in the midst of all of that, there is still this, um, this state of kind of careless indifference, or it's sometimes termed ignorance. Um, and so that's still there. It's just kind of this dullness or kind of carelessness. And so we have, um, you know, our, our life is caught up in a cycle of these three mental states of attachment, aversion, and ignorance. And so we have these um, visual depictions of that in Buddhism, which are called the wheel of life. And so, um, <clears throat> you know, our um, attachment is depicted by, by a chicken and uh, our anger is depicted by a snake and our ignorance by a pig. And they're like chasing each other's tails in this cycle. Uh, they, 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 
And so um, that which is the, the real essence of mind or the real nature of mind gets lost mm-hmm. by, by being overpowered by these afflictive, you know, troublesome states of mind. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so when we talk about what is the real character, what is the real nature of our mind, it's something which is peaceful, gentle, vast, profound, deep. Yes. And the real function of mind, that character of mind that we described before as being that clarity and awareness, that function of mind is to, to understand things, to be aware of things, to see, to understand, to clarify, and so forth. That's what I am. And the way that we can understand that is, you know, sometimes when we are not being stirred up by our desires, we're not being stirred up by our aversions and angers, our mind can just rest very peacefully, can't it? It can abide in a peaceful and gentle state. Mm-hmm. Like we can take, for example, the mind of someone who has um, pursued these meditation practices for a long period of time, and or also the mind of a very young child. Their minds are very unbiased. They don't fall into extremes of uh, extreme opinions of things or extreme views of things. Their mind is open and very um, unbiased and open. Uh, just generally speaking, our mind is has these qualities of peace, of goodness, of wholesomeness. Um, but we're very um, susceptible to change. We're very easily influenced. And so when those faults happen, when our mind falls under the influence of these you know, afflictive emotions and so forth, then all of those wholesome qualities of mind get subjugated, get overwhelmed by, get covered up by or um you know um kind of pushed aside by uh this other um what we call afflictive levels of mind or afflictive emotions and so forth That's Not so. and so in buddhism when we talk about mind we always talk about mind together with something that is referred to as um, the direct translation as wind it's often translated as uh wind energy or a subtle energy uh, it's the same word which in yoga traditions is prana and in like uh, tai chi and so forth is chi um, but what's meant by that is that from the perspective we're just thinking of mind as mind it means that aware quality and thinking of that wind or that energetic quality that means that movement of mind so um, our mind is there and our mind is that awareness, but that wind, that energy can move our mind in lots of ways. 